Good day, folks. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Today we have with us uh, Mehrban uh, Farooq. Uh, he came to Canada quite a while back. Uh, interesting story. He has uh, led um, in interesting transitions, moved in from careers, uh, different careers. And uh, without having me to introduce him, I'll give him the opportunity to get started. So, uh, Mehrban, by if you can get started by telling us a little bit about yourself first. Sure. Um, so just quickly, Saad, my background is I. Um, I did my CA from PwC in Pakistan, Ferguson in '95. Uh, next five years, I was in banking. Started as a controller in ANZ Greenlist, Greenlist Bank for about a year, year and a half. The next three years, I was at Bank of America in Ascent Banking. And just before coming to Canada in 2001, my last year, I was at National Bank of Pakistan, where I was the head of Innocent Banking, and I uh, set up the Innocent Banking Group for them. I came to Canada right after September 11th, actually, which was a very difficult period in 2001 and the uh, next one year I did everything wrong in the book <laughs> to find a job to be honest with mm. you and that's what gives me experience right so one year I didn't have a job uh, started at Enbridge late 2002 Enbridge is a gas company um, in Toronto oil and gas company uh, started in on contract uh, in finance uh, for two months the contract got extended then it became permanent um, so I spent about two years or so in finance in Enbridge, and then I joined the process and projects group, which was fantastic turn of event for me from a career point of view, because, you know, as an accountant, as an investment bank, as a finance guy, I never had a chance to, you know, document process maps or process imp facilitate process improvement workshops. Or, so got got good experience there. And then the next 10 years, um, and thanks to Enbridge, I got some excellent exposure to ERP projects. So I work on three major ERP implementations, um, SAP, Oracle, and Maximo. Maximo is an IBM solution, uh, where I play different roles from you know, project manager to risk manager to budget manager to change management lead, process documentation, business analyst stuff. So that gave me a very well-rounded experience. And when I was not on these, these projects, by the way, Sad, as you probably know, but for your audience purposes, these are like two-year projects, 100 plus million dollars, 150 people. So, you know, you get to learn a lot. When a lot of these people, a lot of people, a lot of opinions come together, how to manage the team, you know, you, you see how the steering committee works, how the, you know, people on the floor works. That's a lot of good experience. And besides these projects, I implemented enterprise risk management and business process management in Enbridge. On my last project, uh, the maximum implementation in October 2016, um, the company went through a big merger and, you know, they laid off a bunch of people. Now, at that point, it was a shock, I'll be very honest with you, because it was the first time when I was laid off. Now that I think back in hindsight, it was a great opportunity. So, you know, you get a good severance. And I was 46 at that point in time. It, did I say 46? I was 36, by the way, at that point in time. <laughs> <laughs> that was four years ago. And um, no, and that was uh, because I'd worked with a bunch of consultants on these ERP projects, etc. cetera. Um, not to be little anybody, but I realized that what they are doing, I can do also, literally speaking, right? right. So that was the moment in time when I got laid off. I decided to go on my own. Um, it wasn't easy. It was a, it was a, it was a, phase where I had to self-discover myself, what skills do I really have that I can sell, right, um, that people will buy. I mean, literally speaking, it took me six or seven months to get my first gig and, you know, then rest is history. So once I got started uh, on my own, um, you know, I got some offers also to become permanent employee, which I turned down respectfully. Because uh, I think consulting is for me. So it's it's been four years that I've done my own consulting, and it makes perfect sense. So that's kind of my my brief profile. Very interesting journey. I, I think in some of the earlier interviews with other folks, we have talked about the whole uh, contracting versus the full time employment, but to a, from a different perspective, from the financial and from the time management aspect of it. With you, we want to have the conversation that, in terms of the workload and how you approach things in the organization. What is the difference between contracting and a full-time role? So, Saad, one thing I will say, whether, when, when, and again, this is me, when I was an employee versus even a contractor, I always find that it's never a 40-hour week. I mean, you know, when you're on these major projects, especially in the initial phases where you kind of, there's a lot to learn, it's never nine to five, it's never a 40, so you got to dive in. Number one. So that's a similarity. There's no difference there. Um, in terms of difference, I would say um, I, I, I don't worry about anymore. So when I coach a lot of people, whether it's 
you know, on a personal level or people I'm working with, um, I'm I'm not concerned now about the bonuses, the politics in the organization. I'm as a project manager, I need to be very aware of the politics yeah. in the organization, but I don't yeah. need to be involved in there. It doesn't impact me. Number one. Number two. While I drive a lot of people on my projects who don't report to me directly, uh, I don't pay their you know uh, salaries or bonuses. Um, but at the same time, they depend on me to you know for a lot of things. So the point I'm trying to make here is that. I'm not involved in their remuneration. I'm not involved in their bonuses. I coach them, guide them. So it allows me to focus a lot on the work itself. And that's what I enjoy in consulting, right? Yeah. I do get to pick and choose a bit, not too much, right? Because when you're working with a client and they have a priority project, of course, they want it done. But there is a bit of flexibility I have as a contractor, as an independent consultant to pick and choose what I want to do. So I've been fortunate in the last four years, uh, besides ERP itself, I've worked on like shared services mergers, um, I worked on SOX ITTC, which I had no clue, honestly. So it's been great learning curve because of this diversity that I've been doing. Um, um, in the last four years, probably what I've learned, I haven't learned in my 10 years at Enbridge because it did get monotonous after a while, even though you're on three major ERP implementations, risk management gets a bit monotonous. So in my private consulting, um, the opportunities I get and what I can pick and choose, it gives me a great opportunity to learn more. And frankly, as you know, with the emerging tech that's going on with the AI and RPA and blockchain, everything going out there. You've got to challenge yourself. And that's if, if I had to give your audience one advice, right? I would say that nothing grows in the comfort zone. Yeah. You've, got, you've got to challenge yourself. And with every challenge, with every storm that comes your way, and trust me, I've been through a lot of them <laughs> on these <laughs> projects. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got scars, I've got scars to prove, mm -hmm. but I would not exchange that scar for anything because those scars are the experience. Right. The yeah. key is to survive the storm and then you'll be a better version of yourself. Absolutely. Thank you so much on that. answer. So one last question. Uh, and of course, we could go on and you're a man of such knowledge. Uh, and sure. hopefully in future sessions, we can have more deeper dives. But one last question for today I want to have is that what is your take on uh, volunteer work within the community? And uh, how? why would you because I know you've been involved in a lot of volunteer work. Why would you why do you do it and why do you would you recommend to others to do it? That's, that's a great question, Sarah. I'm glad, by the way, what you do is it's, it's commendable. Um, volunteering is giving back, right? Um, number one. So whatever you learned, you got to give back in some shape and form within your capacity, right? Uh, my suggestion would be don't overstretch yourself. Do the little things that you can do, but do it well, right? Um, and the other reason I do volunteer, if I'm to be very honest, so for two selfish reasons, I volunteer. Right. One, it makes me feel good about myself. Right. And two, I learn. And I know this sounds silly, um, but when you're coaching people and you might be repeating the same things that you learned yourself for the last 30 years, 20 years, 15 years, five years. But by repeating itself quite often, it comes in your active memory versus a subconscious memory. So by coaching people, I learn myself. Uh, and I'll give you a perfect example. So when I was laid off in October 2016, because I'd been coaching people a lot, I was able to survive. Mm, right? Yeah. Because those 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 messages that I've been giving to people, I reflected on myself and it worked. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jamal Banbai, for taking the time out today. And uh, hopefully in the future, uh, we'll connect with you again. So thank you for doing this for us today. It's a pleasure, Sad. And keep, keep doing what you're doing. Great job, by the way. Thank you.